Super resolution microscopy is a new form of microscopy that is now possible. It allows us to look at things with much, much better resolution than was previously possible. So from the smallest, from the molecule to whole organisms, uh, we can now address questions that, you know, were unthinkable just a few years back. My name is Clemens Kaminski and I work at the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology and my group develops optical microscopes to look at processes in living systems. Until about 10 years ago it was not possible to see things that are smaller than a wavelength of light. And recently a whole new class of so-called optical super resolution microscopy techniques have become available for which the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded and they permit us now to look at much, 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 much greater detail inside living systems. So we can see really what the molecular mechanisms are behind burning biological questions. So the key work that we've pioneered in, in this group here is to use super resolution techniques to look at the molecular mechanisms of proteins which go wrong. So proteins which start to misfold, they adopt shapes in which they don't function correctly. And in those shapes, they start to cluster with each other and they cause diseases such as Parkinson's disease. And so for the first time, we're now able, with the help of these super resolution methods, to see this process directly, um, not just in the test tube, but even in the cell. And that really opens up for us a completely new way of answering um, questions about the molecular mechanisms of diseases such as Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. And so we have, for example, now a possibility to see whether we can use drugs to inhibit this process. On the image we see here, we have a conventional microscopy image of so-called protein fibrils, fibrils that form in the brains of patients who suffer from Alzheimer's disease. So essentially there are long chains of proteins which make these hard fibrillar structures. And this is what you see, you see hardly anything because the, the wavelength of light limits you in what you can see in a conventional microscope. We just get this blurred mess. We cannot differentiate uh, what the molecules look like at all. But with super resolution now, we are able to see exactly how this process of aggregation, how these molecules grow in size and how they cause toxic effects, effects that cause cells, brain cells to die. We can see this directly now for the first time. The most important thing in super resolution microscopy is that we image the molecules one by one. We switch most of the molecules off, that's the trick, so that we don't see them and only see a very small sub part. And by doing this trick, we can localize the molecules with much higher precision than is possible with conventional imaging techniques. These techniques generate huge amounts of data. The microscopes we have here can generate up to 600 megabytes of data per second. So you can easily fill a hard disk, an entire hard disk in a few minutes. So we're dealing with big data here and processing and storing it is an enormous problem. So the field is developing so rapidly that to be at the cutting edge, we cannot wait until commercial instruments are available. So what we do is we have to build our own instruments and we, we have laboratories where physicists and engineers and biologists and medics all work side by side to make these developments possible. And one exciting development in Cambridge is the so-called Cambridge Advanced Imaging Center. And essentially it's getting technology developers together to make their instruments available for the wider research community in Cambridge so that they can use state-of-the-art instruments for their research without having to worry about setting, setting up such activities themselves. It's a great time to be in this field at the moment because so much is happening so quickly and there are lots of questions out there that we still haven't been able to answer. So we need to be faster even than we are now and we need to be able to see things in three dimensions within living cells to really understand how does a molecule behave uh, inside a cell and how does the cell behave when this molecule is doing something inside the cell. We're only just beginning to imagine what we can do with these techniques and really what we, what we have ahead of us is a revolution in biology. <laughs>